Hi. I hope I can give you some tools for thinking about uh, your own interesting problems and projects. And I hope that these tools are very basic, uh, although they may be forgotten or not learned properly. Uh, the, the key tool is the ability to quantify those things we all value and love, the qualitative aspects of whatever we're doing, the, the beauty or the sustainability and all these other ideas. And one of the things that has interested me is how we often speak about these with words. We even use the term subjective about them. And yet, if we're going to communicate with each other about these really important things, I think we have to define them a little bit better so we cannot misunderstand them, so we can work towards them together. And there's a pretty ancient technique for being clear about ideas, and it's called quantification. So that's my major uh, theme. I think I'm do something, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna uh, give you a, 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 something to think about. I believe that all qualities that we're interested in can be quantified. That means you can put a number on them. Uh, I believe that this is, this is not about mathematics, it's not about measurement, it's not about statistics, it's about people communicating with each other about things that are central to their lives. This is William Thompson, Lord Kelvin. You perhaps know the Kelvin scale of measure from physics. And in 1893, he said something that I read in the 1960s when I was about 25, and I can compete with Arne here for the oldest man in the room. <laughs> and uh, it changed my life uh, because I, I took a whole different uh, take on everything that happened to me. And what he said was that if you think you know something about a subject, try to put a number on it, try to measure it. If you can, maybe you know something about it. But if you cannot quantify it, if you cannot measure it, maybe you should admit to yourself that your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. Hmm? Very powerful, that idea alone. That changed my life, who knows? Maybe somebody in this room will get their lives a little bit changed by it. So, um, now, uh, one, one basic trick for understanding complex things is an old one. Uh, Rene Descartes was a master of it, for example, and uh, as we shall see, many others. It's about decomposing the complex problem into its constituent parts, okay? Cartesian analysis. And uh, one, one way of learning to quantify things that seem to be very subjective and not quantifiable is actually to decompose the high-level idea like sustainability into things like um, you know, not polluting the environment and not wasting food and things like that, different elements of it. And then each one of these is more easy to quantify, and the quantification of your idea of sustainability, for example, uh, is, is the set of the different quantifications. But long story short, if you take the trouble to decompose and quantify, you will be able to communicate with people you're working with to make things better uh, about your common goals and objectives and your understanding of the situation. Um, one form of decomposition is to decompose the flow of value from your efforts. Uh, a, 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 an old way of doing projects is you, you work a long time on a project and then at the end of maybe one, two, three years, da-da, the solution exists. Um, I, I found that there's a better way of doing things, which is also very intuitive and we use it in our ordinary lives, that you need to uh, think about a problem for about a week, my maximum, and on the second week and every week thereafter, you should be trying to change something, to make something better, to deliver a little bit more quality to real people. And in doing so, not only will the value be delivered, but you will learn from trying to deliver value what it takes to deliver value. Uh, little things like the technology isn't enough. You have to motivate people. You have to fit in with their culture. And you sometimes have to learn that the hard way by actually doing it. So here's a, a little situation in the uh, um, Pentagon uh, where we had a, there was a project that had taken 11 years and it was a total failure. Uh, and in particular, General Schwarzkopf in the first Gulf War was very angry at the system and said so, and had a lot of power. And I got involved with, what are we going to do about this? And I sat in the Pentagon and suggested that uh, we should spend about a week thinking about the really important things that had to be done. I called them the top 10 quantified objectives or qualities of the system. 
We did that in one day. Uh, and then we figured out top 10 major strategies for getting there on the second day. On the, th on the th uh, third day, we, we uh, do something I'll show you later in the talk where we try to combine these things. But uh, on the fourth day, we do something pretty dramatic. I said, on the fourth day, we're going to figure out what we're going to do next week to make things better for real. And they could hardly believe what they heard. And they told me bluntly, that's not going to happen. This is the Pentagon. Things move slowly around here. There's a hell of a bureaucracy. Nothing is going to happen next week. But to make a long story short, uh, by the time we did get to Thursday, they came to me and said, Tom, we found something we can do next week, and it'll really make the real system better. And I said, what's that? And they said, you'll never believe we never thought about it before in these 11 years. I said, what's that? He said, well, one of the major properties of the system was people were getting late answers, hours later, and they needed them instantly. And uh, what we did was we analyzed why the commanding general, in this case, Norman Schwarzkopf, wasn't getting answers quickly, and we discovered a strange thing. The system, uh, when he inquired of it, put him at the end of a queue of about 15,000 people simultaneously using the system. So he waited in line for 14,000 other people of lower rank to get an answer. And we figured out that if we just pro reprogrammed the system to say, if big general moved ahead of queue, he'd get an instant answer. I, sa I said, you could deliver that next week, make a real difference. It would uh, crack one of our top 10 things we had to get, which was fast answers. And they said, yeah, we can do it next week. And I was very skeptical and said, could you really do it next week? And they said, yes. I said, how do you know? And they said, and smiled, because we already did it. <laughs> <laughs> if general, then moved ahead of Q. Now, this shows how this is a very little thing, but it had, it, 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 people had suffered without it for 11 years. And, and nobody realized that uh, people were getting late answers because uh, rank wasn't given privilege or priority. OK. Um, so um, now, uh, decomposing things into subsets is a, a good process for defining them, understanding, and communicating about them. But at some point, moving to quantifying the ideas, as uh, Lord Kelvin suggests, is a pretty good idea. Uh, because numbers communicate variable ideas much better than words. Okay? If I say extremely fast, you say, what do you mean? I said 300 kilometers an hour. Ah. Thank you very much, right? But if I say extremely user-friendly, what do you think I mean? You can guess, but you're all guessing different things, that's for sure. Okay? Um, I, uh, whenever I'm arrogant enough to tell people, like I'm telling you, that you can quantify absolutely all qualities, a lot of people get their backs up and say, well, that's subjective, that's qualitative, you can't do that. What they're inadvertently saying is they've never done it, they've never learned how, and never seen anybody do it, so they don't really believe it's possible. But uh, So a Dutch engineer, once I was working with, he said, surely you cannot quantify love. That's a pretty beautiful quality in life. Okay, it's been talked about, it'll be talked about more today. And I said, well, I'll teach you. Would you like to learn how to quantify love? Just for fun. <laughs> okay. So what I, what I asked uh, my, my class to do was make a list of all the aspects of love. That's the title of a Lloyd Webber musical, in case you didn't know. Or have you ever heard, love is a many splendored thing? Okay, got it right, many splendored thing. Anyway, they made this list. And any group of people make a similar list, if not identical list. And I said, okay, we've decomposed the idea of love into some component parts. It's a subjective view, but it's a view we can share and say, this is our subjective view. And maybe you'd like to add or subtract some things from it. I said, pick anything you like there, and we'll experiment on making it clearer. And they picked trust. And I said, I wonder if we can decompose trust into its component parts to get a better understanding of it. And they did that. And here you're looking at what they did. And I said, okay, time to get even clearer. Let's pick the first one on the list, the truthfulness. Let's try to quantify it and see if it becomes clearer. So in simple terms, here's what they did. We found a scale of measure. Actually, the original scale said average lies per month. <laughs> and we got a little insight, like when my wife says, have I put on any weight recently, darling? Now, <laughs> As I'm a geek and a techie, I could say, there's the digital scale over there. What a stupid question. <laughs> but I don't say that. I say, not that I can see, dear. It must have ended up in the right place. <laughs> okay. 
Anyway, at the moment I've done this with the class, and I've done it a number of times since, everybody gets it. We can understand a complex concept like love by decomposition, if necessary, two levels. And uh, we can clarify what we mean by, for example, truthfulness in very specific terms by defining a scale of measure, by defining how bad we've been at it in the past and how much we want to improve in the future. A friend of mine, Lawrence Day, works at Boeing with uh, his day job is uh, business systems on the web. Um, and uh, he heard me hold a talk about this very thing I just told you about. And, and uh, now his hobby is Christianity. He told me once, I just took a doctoral degree in divinity for the fun of it, Tom. You know anybody, any geeks who do that? Okay, and o other things. And he got very annoyed when I suggested that love could be quantified. Basically, he said, it's not in the Bible, it's not God's word, Jesus didn't say it, so it can't be right. It's, it's too much of a central... I, it, it's as though I'd done a Muhammad drawing, and somebody of that religion got pretty annoyed and put a fatwa out on me. I mean, he walked out and didn't talk to me for six weeks. But I finally got an email from him, and he said, apologies, Tom, humble apologies. In Corinthians 13... <laughs> Book one, agape, love, is defined exactly the way you said, by decomposition. How's that for a basic fundamental idea, <laughs> right? And take a look at the first one, suffereth long, right? Can you measure that? Sure. There's a lady right here with us, Mrs. Gilp. She has suffered this fellow for 55 years. <laughs> I know she loves me. <laughs> okay. Next. Um, now, um, you all know that you cannot compare apples and oranges, right? Wrong. <laughs> Obviously we do. We walk into a supermarket and we buy this and that and these combinations. Uh, this is symbolic of a lady who has uh, all got all kinds of different fruits for different purposes and makes comparison and makes judgments. And uh, using the next slide, Here's a little tool I've developed. I call it impact estimation. And we use it for very big, complex problems. Uh, actually, we're, we're, some of my students I was working with yesterday are doing a big project at British Gas for automated uh, metering systems using this. But here's a simplified version of it. If you take a number of qualities that you're interested in the fruit, taste, nutrition, shelf life, and you rate them for the different fruits numerically, you'll get some figure of merit for how good those fruits are for your particular purposes. If you, in addition, add something about the cost, you can work out the value for money. It looks like the apples have twice the value for money uh, for our purposes, not in general, not for everybody, just for the goals we've set that we've quantified made clear. This is a pretty powerful tool for looking at complex systems. Where do you start? Um, one, uh, clarifying ideas is one thing, but being at the right level of thought is another thing. Okay? So if you clarify a low-level, not really important thing, you're not doing much good. If you have a very unclear ideas about the really important top-level things, not very good. The best combination is to be at the right, appropriate, high-priority level and clarify it. And that's really the summary of my talk. I'm going to try a little quick thought experiment. I'd like you each to think about the most important project in your life. Can you put in, mentally, just put a name on it. It could be a personal, family project, professional project. Now, I'd like you to think of the most important outcome that you're really concerned about, the thing that will get better. Can you put a name on it to yourself? Now, ask yourself why you want that thing, that outcome. You got an answer? Why you want it? Okay. Now you've just gone to a higher level and a higher priority of thinking. Something more important for you than the thing down there. But now, ask again. Why do you want the second thing? What are you going to get out of it? Why is it important to you? And you get to a third level. And you know what? You're moving up in priority, your priority. You're moving up in scope of seeing solutions on a broader, uh, broader way. And you can add, there's a famous thing called the Japanese five whys. You can Google it, right? And maybe five times is what you need to ask why. It's amazing the power. I hope some of you 
just begun to observe it now, of asking why and getting higher level answers. It moves you to the right place to start solving your problem and the right place to start quantifying and clarifying it. So we need to ask what we really want, and the five whys gets us there. We need to clarify what we really want by decomposing it, if it's complex, by putting uh, numbers on it. And I think I'll skip through these, really covered them, and uh, I've got two and a half minutes left of my talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, I found a way of summarizing all this for executives who don't want to get too technical, but they need to deal often with technical proposals of great magnitude and say yes or no to 50 million kroner or dollar or pounds. And so I've got my 12 tough questions. And we're not going to go through all of these, but you, of course, have access to them. If, when somebody says, if you use, buy my widget or do my project, you will get greater productivity. Sounds good. Want one of those. Um, amazing how many people buy into that just because somebody said it. They don't ask for any verification. But your first question is, this improvement of uh, productivity, how much productivity will we get if we buy your product? Uh, a lot. No. <laughs> By the way, do you even know how we define productivity, what it means to us? No. Well, why are you telling us we'll improve the productivity if you don't even know. Do you know how much we want and when we want it? No. Well, stop bullshitting us with this productivity stuff. Why don't you... Uh, we'll define for you quantitatively exactly what we want. At Ericsson uh, base stations, we define productivity as 12 different measures, things like the predictability of delivery time. Okay? And that was a tailored definition just for Ericsson, just at that time. So productivity was... Uh, satisfying those numbers, those goals. Okay, so uh, I think you'll find, uh, actually once I printed this 12 tough questions on the back of a business card and just handed it to executives and they'd come back and say, wow, that was fun in that meeting. Just innocently, you know, low level, low profile, no danger, asking the questions of the experts, asking the questions of the salesmen and finding out they were bullshitting us, didn't know what they were doing. Leave you with that thought. Thank you.